built-in Microsoft Teams tabs for websites, Office documents, SharePoint document libraries, and other tabs can be configured using Microsoft Graph. In this section, we're going to learn how to configure an existing built-in tab with Microsoft Graph. Microsoft Teams supports the following kinds of tabs that you see listed here. Website tabs, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF tabs, SharePoint document libraries, lists, and page tabs, and also some additional tabs, such as Planner, Microsoft Stream, Microsoft Forms, and Power BI. You can use these tabs to display rich content in your channel members for your channel members uh, by adding these different tabs programmatically to your Microsoft uh, Teams team. And you can do that using the Microsoft Graph Teamwork endpoint. Many of the different tabs are configurable to specify the content that they should display. And some of them support including website URLs so that you can jump out of Microsoft Teams and into a browser if you need a more real estate experience. To create and con or configure Microsoft Teams tabs using the Microsoft Graph API, you need to know the Teams app ID of the app and the entity ID, the content URL, the remove URL, and website URL to provide for that kind of app. Some of these properties are required while others aren't depending on the tab that you're creating. The Teams app ID is also the ID property of the apps manifest. Now, when you want to create or configure a tab, you're going to submit an HTTP post to the tabs endpoint on a channel with a payload that contains settings to configure the tab, as you can see here. And let's talk about some of these uh, properties. The Teams app ID is the ID of the application as it's defined in its manifest. The Teams app at odata.bind property is what defines the Microsoft Teams app the tab is defined in. The configuration object contains multiple properties, some that are required that the tab uses to load the specified content. Now let's look at some of the different examples uh, for the built-in tabs in Microsoft Teams that we can add to our projects. All of these built-in tabs have app IDs, and I've talked about this a little bit. Let me explain this a little bit more. Um, all of these IDs are well known for all the different tabs that are configurable. Tab IDs are defined by the installed apps manifest. So when you're config configuring a tab, that Teams app at odata.bind property tells Microsoft which one it's supposed to load. These app IDs are either strings or GUIDs depending on the app. They're all really strings, it's just some of those strings are also GUIDs. So here are the different properties that we may be required uh, on the configuration object. The content URL, that's the content that should be displayed in the tab, and that's going to be required for almost all the tabs. Um, the website URL, that's going to be uh, used to redirect the user when the tab can't be shown. So like if I'm on a specific mobile client that doesn't know how to launch the Word tab, it's going to pop it up in an external browser. Same thing where like say Power BI or Planner. The remove URL is a page that should be displayed in a dialog when the tab is deleted from the channel. And the entity ID is sometimes used to refer to a spe specific item, as you'll see when we do a demo for adding a tab for Word or Excel. And let's take a look at some of the different app IDs uh, for our tabs. So you can see here, some of them have a consistent naming structure, like the ones for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. However, a PDF, well, that's similar to the previous th three that we did, as is website, but you'll see where things start to change when we get to SharePoint. A SharePoint document library follows a similar naming convention, but a SharePoint list or a page is looking for the GUID, uh, that specific GUID that you see listed there. And it's gonna need additional details to know which list or which page to display. Same thing goes for Microsoft Stream, Microsoft Forms, OneNote, Planner, and Power BI. Now I also talked about these configuration properties. Some of these are not gonna be required. Some of these can't, aren't even supported. When it comes to Office documents like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF, you're going to have to specify the content URL of the file for the underlying SharePoint document library where the file is located, as well as the ID of the document. And I'll show you in the demo how to get those. For the website tab, you're simply just going to pass in the URL as the entity ID and the content URL. For a SharePoint document library, well, the entity ID has to be empty and a URL uh, has to be the underlying SharePoint document library as well for the content URL. But as you see, all the other places, they're all going to be null and they're not gonna have any values that are gonna be set on these. 